What's going on, ladies and gents? Welcome back to the Borner Made Podcast. Today, I am fired up to introduce you to a very good friend of mine, Leah McSweeney. Leah is an entrepreneur. She launched one of the very first female urban streetwear brands, Married to the Mob. She's the founder of that company, the CEO of that company. She still runs that company. She also is a reality TV star. We'll get into that when we talk to Leah. We go into all sorts of different things from growing up in New York City to running a business today. Uh, She's incredible. Ladies and gents, Leah McSweeney. What's going on, guys? Uh, Welcome back to the Born and Made podcast. Thank you for tuning in. I am fired up to introduce my next guest, Leah McSweeney, (laughs) old fucking friend of mine. Uh, We've known each other for a long time. Leah is a boss lady. Uh, You can call me a boss bitch. I was about to call her a boss bitch. (laughs) We're not PC here, okay? You can can call me whatever you want. Boss bitch is great. Boss bitch, a number one. Um, We go way back and uh, she is an insane entrepreneur. Killing it in the game, all sorts of shit. Her story is incredible. She's born and raised in New York, just like me. Um, so this is gonna be a good one. This is gonna be a real good one. Leah. What the word? Hi. Is? Wait, are we gonna talk about how we first met? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if you ever want to like look at a camera, because you can, you just okay, look up there. Okay. But I mean, yeah. <laughs> Bug it. No, I actually don't even remember exactly how we first met. Yeah. I don't but know you how were we like bartending. Shit, my mic just went, but it might be all right. It's um, fine. You were bartending. I was drinking a lot. So. Is that how we met? Something like that. Frank. Sounds about right. Punching whatever on the Sounds about back right. and the Lower East Side when like nothing was there. Yeah. Right? On um, Clinton Street. Those days, yeah, so you are like one of the few people left that know. The Mikey Chernout. <laughs> what? No, there's so many people that. I mean, no, I, might be, I might be oblivious to it, but the truth is, is that, like, you know, I, I, there's very few people that can really recall or, like, say, uh, like, there, I'll walk down the street with my wife and I'll see somebody that I know from the old days. And is that, like, does that make your heart, does that make no, you feel a little uncomfortable no, or not she really? Knows, she knows. she knows completely. She, yeah. I'm an animal in general. And right. she also, she knows that, but she also, she knows my history. You yeah. know, like I was a fucking street fighter. Yeah, you know totally. I mean? And so she knows that. And I'm not like that, of course, these days. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I, I don't regret it. Um, no, re- what's the point of regrets, right? I was like thinking that the other day in terms of the show. Because I'm like, God, is there anything I regret this season? And I was like, mm, because of the whole drinking thing, you know? Like I was like, damn, that's crazy that like I hadn't drank. And then like I did start drinking like right before I got casted for this show. And basically, uh, there's a lot of drinking, mm-hmm. you know, so. On the show. Yeah, yeah, and off the show. I mean, right. I was back, hey, I fucking was like doing my research. <laughs> I'm gonna go, I'm gonna like go. dive head in. You know what I mean? I'm not here to have a glass of wine. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I had, yeah, had a drink in nine years. So it was books. like time to turn up, you know? Um, and I have no regrets. Because you know what? The last nine months that I was drinking, I had fun. I was definitely not having fun when I was hungover. Mm-hmm. But, and it's all good, and now it's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. But what's the point of having regrets? Because it's You like, needed to go through what you went through. That's also, the way I sort of look at it. I say, there's nothing in my life that I didn't have to go through. Actually, true. like I believe that everything we go through... Yeah. I don't, you know, I, I'm not like this, like, divine plan dude where I think everything is planned out. And, uh, but I do believe that, like, everything we go through was meant for us to go through yeah. because it's gotten us to where we're at. And if that means that you end up in jail, well, you had to do that shit yeah. because I know jail, I mean, you know, we know a lot of people, we grew up in the city, like, jail has saved a lot of my friends' lives. A hundred percent. You know, a hundred percent. Yeah, it it, ha- it does. I mean, it can. It depends what you do with it, right? I mean, I know people who have gotten their, you know, GEDs or you know, whatever, studied sober, in jail, right? got, got went sober to federal prison it. for seven years, came out like, and are killing it. A mensch, right? You know, a and mensch. go in yeah. like a fucking animal. 
And I may convert to Judaism. Really? Speaking of mentions, yeah. Will you? But anyway, I, yeah. I'm Are gonna you getting married? No. You're just thinking about it. No, hell no. I'm probably never getting married. So, but I think I am a Jew. Can you do me a solid? Can what? you just tell me who you are? Just I kind of right. Know, I know because like, we haven't even. I just right. I would like you to just introduce okay. yourself and just my say, ear is like, like popping. So like if I I'm keep sure like doing right. some weird like sounds, it's me like trying to unpop my ear. Um, my name is Leah McSweeney. I'm 37 years old, and I have a clothing line called Married to the Mob. It's 15 years young, and I'm also the newest housewife of Real Housewives of New York City. Whoa. Whoa. But first and foremost, yes, I have my clothing line. I also have a podcast that everybody should subscribe to called Improper Etiquette that I co-host with Laura Stiles from Hot 97. Improper Etiquette. Yes. And I have a daughter who's 12 and a half, and that's me in a nutshell. I love that about you. Yeah. Um, so you grew up in New York. I did. Well, we moved to Connecticut when I was 14, but, and then I moved back. And you then, were what, 18? When I was 18, even, or maybe I was 17, actually. But, or no, I was 18. But, you know, within that four years of living in Connecticut, it was like me, like, running away from home and, like, coming back to the city and all that. So, mm -hmm. but yeah. That's they, when we met, when you were running well. away from home. <laughs> No, actually, I fucking, like, left my family vacation. <laughs> That's true, you did. <laughs> and my sister still talks about it. She's like, we didn't get to go to Disney World because of you. Rough times. Um, so tell me about, like, so the, here, the idea of this show, it's called Born or Made, and the premise is, I, I think, a really fun conversation, because mm -hmm. I think it's interesting. Uh, you know, do you believe that you were born with this inherent ability to go out there and crush the mm -hmm. way you do? Or do you think it was something that you just learned and you were made over time? God, it's like so weird because like I have imposter syndrome. Like I don't feel like, I get very uncomfortable when I have like events for like my brand and stuff and people are like, oh my God, this is great. You're doing, you're doing so great. I don't know, I just feel like inside still I'm like, I'm like, I'm not doing that great. You know what I mean? I'm like, it's not, like, I'm not crushing it. Like, what are you talking about? Even though, yes, when I think about it and what I have accomplished, especially considering, like, my delinquency as a teenager and everything and whatever, all that, I'm like, wow, I have really made a great life for myself and I should be really proud of myself when I think about it. But there's still this other voice that's saying, like, you're not crushing it. Like, you're not, like, all that. Like, you don't have it all together. Because, of course, not. I don't have it all together. And I'm 10 who, who the fuck does? Who the fuck does? Exactly. I mean, the people who are saying they do are, like, totally full of shit. Right. And if anybody, honestly, like, I believe that that, because, by the way, I believe that voice is healthy. If I, if it's I, humility, I, probably, it's right? Humility. It's humility. That is the like, def definition yeah. of humility, right? You probably, like, are a sociopath if you don't have that voice. That's like yeah, I think I think that I think all of us have it. I think if you're incredibly insecure, you somehow. And I'm not saying we don't have. I have insecurities out the wazoo. I'm sure we all do, and I know we all do. Yeah. But I think people that walk around thinking that their shit doesn't stink and yeah. they're like pathological, typically. Yeah. Um, and I think those voices are healthy. You know, when I walk into one of my restaurants, I don't like. You're not like, Stand this is the, my castle. <laughs> like, you know, like, kiss I'm the, the king, ring. Right? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, sleeves up, busboy. You know, right. I don't look like a typical restaurateur. Mm. If I'm busting tables in my restaurant and people don't know who I am, they straight think I'm a busboy. And I'm stoked about that. I'm like, great, this is awesome. Like, mm. I, want, I want that to be the case. Right. I, I, and so, I, you know, I, I think. I love that you think that voice is healthy. That's so, that makes me so happy because. I was always thinking, God, that voice, what's wrong with me for having that voice? But now that now I have a different perspective on it because you said that it's healthy. And like I you're believe right. it's healthy. Yeah, I believe I, think you're I right believe too. that the, that voice there is is somewhat grounding and honestly, like some you can you can have a different perspective about that voice and allow that voice to drag you to the ground and fucking right. beat you down. Yeah. Or you can have the adverse opinion and, and be like, that voice is a motivator for me. Mm. Like when I wake up at five o'clock in the morning to go to the gym, that voice is telling me to go back to bed. 
you loser. I listen to that voice every day, <laughs> every morning. <laughs> but I, I've, I've somehow, some way, been able to convert that voice into positive um, Do you really behavior. wake up every day at 5 a.m. to the gym? Yeah, I wake up. I wake up. So it wasn't always like that. But I have a wife and I have kids, right? And fitness, you know, I'm sober. So for me, there's very few things that give me this opportunity to like. Totally just get, get that. Get I know. It, you I know? know. And like, there's also because of my businesses and because of the family, I have very little time, time to be right? alone. Of course, yeah. And so what was happening was because it's so important to me, I was actually sacrificing time with my family, or like stressing out because I knew I needed to get it in. And so like in between meetings, I'd be like stressed out. And I said, you know what? I've got to change this whole thing. I got to change it all because it's something that I it means so much to me. But it only means so much to me. Doesn't mean so much to my kids. Doesn't mean so much to my wife. Mm. Doesn't mean so much to my business. Right. But I do know also, and this also came full circle for me. It's the num It's the most important thing in my life. More important than my kids. More because important it than keeps my wife. you. Because it makes me a better person. Exactly. And so I take care of that shit, but I take care of it first. I don't. I don't. I don't make anybody else suffer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think so I, I need just to do start it. doing. I need. I need to start working. Game changing morning. life. Game changing. I just. I'm such not a morning person. It's. You know what? I don't think anybody loves to wake up at 5 a.m. I mean, I don't have to wake up that early, luckily, because like I don't have like two kids. I have one who's like basically like gonna be turning 30, but not really. So I can like do like 8 a.m. I sleep late. I like to sleep a lot. Yeah, I mean, so. you know what? I look, I look at it like this: by 7:30 in the morning. I've done my two favorite things to do throughout the day. Which are? Go to the gym and have breakfast with my kids and my wife. Aww, that's it. That's sweet. And then, by, and then straight up, the rest of the day, even though work is tough and always a challenge, and it's just like a cakewalk. Totally. Because you know? I'm just like, I know that the two things that keep me going, the two most important things in my life, self-care and the people I surround myself with, actually, the two <laughs> most important things, like, Everything else I can give a shit about. Do you go to meetings still? Um, I go to one. Mm. I go to one on like Wednesday one a nights. Week. Yeah, one meeting a week. Um, but yeah, th that like I, I think that that early morning thing has been like the. It's just been such a game changer because I get it out of the way and yeah. I never think about it and, and I do it. And then it's like you don't have to because I do find myself being like, oh shit, I have this and then I have that. And then what about later? I can't leave Kira at home by herself at 7 p.m. to go work out. That's fucked up to her. She's been like, I've, been, I've had nothing to do in the morning. I'm the one that's waking up at 10 a.m. I could have worked out. So, like, so I need it. to just do that. Just try I'm it. doing it. Just I'm doing it. it. That's it. I'm done. Like, tomorrow. It's... Done. Try it. Okay. So, um, I'm tell glad me about I handled your childhood. That. Okay. Um, <laughs> it was, um, well, I'm the oldest of three. I have a sister and a brother, and I grew up on 24th Street and 8th Avenue in, you know, the 80s, and it was, like, a, just a great, diverse neighborhood with drag queens, and, I mean, it was, like, totally great, literally, like, drag queens everywhere, club kids. It was, you know, in the middle of, like, every, like, the tunnel, limelight, you know. And, and a pretty rough neighborhood, too, in the, it, in the Yeah, in the it, was, it definitely was. It was, but... Also, like, everywhere was, kind yeah. of. Mm -hmm. Like, even, like, the Upper East Side, like, mm -hmm. which is where I went to school, was, like, mm, like, if you went one block one way, it was, like, whoa, like, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Kids were getting robbed then. They're not oh, so hell yeah. I don't think they're getting robbed anymore. They were totally I mean, they getting, might be, but I don't, it's not nearly as bad. They were, def they were definitely getting robbed and beat up. Kids were getting robbed. For sure. All the time. All the time. Um, I personally love that feeling of a little danger, even as a kid, as like, I really didn't mind it. Like 10, 11, 12, I remember being like, this is kind of fun. It's like, whoa, like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Which is why I love Paris, because Paris still has an element of like. Might, you might get robbed on a back Exactly, alley. but New York, it just doesn't have that anymore. Yeah. Um, which is obviously a great thing for our <laughs> children, um, but not like real estate prices are like yeah. crazy and rent is nuts, but. You know, I mean, I, I, I had a lot of different interests. I was into sports. I was, like, into acting. Um, I went to a school that, you know, we were, like, very, like, middle class, working class family. And I went to a school 
with very, very wealthy girls. And I did always feel like I cannot, I'm never going to be able to meet them where they are in terms of like the clothes they're wearing and the size of their apartments and getting chauffeured to school and all that. <clears throat> so you had a chip early I had on. a, it wasn't like a chip, it was more like a anarchy kind of, like anti- Fuck the system. Fuck the system feeling. And you know, I was expelled from this school in eighth grade, which that gave For me a fighting? chip. That gave me a chip on my shoulder, no. I really did not do anything to deserve being expelled. The whole, my whole class was like very, like just a bunch of shitheads. Like we were just crazy. No one really was listening to teachers. Like we were like, fuck you. They made us take our class picture like twice because, um, right there. is it here? Do you no, see it? it's like under your shirt. Do you think they can hear me? Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 he tapes it, sorry. Um, <laughs> I forgot. Um, but the thing is, I was the girl who was there with financial aid, not a famous last name, my parents not having, not Where did donating. You go? What? What school is this? Sacred Heart. Okay. Common Sacred Heart. Um, and they asked me not to come back to school after Christmas break. And my mom was like, she has to come back to school. Mid year? They, Mid year, they, they tried to do it. But my mom was like, she can't, I cannot have this kid at home all year. And like, we're not gonna put her in the public school in the neighborhood because it's like way too fucking rough. Um, yeah, because you would have ended up at like I 70 or something. Exactly. Yeah. So, or like, what is now humanities, I think. Yeah, it was yeah. something else before. But so they were like, fine, she can stay here till June. Like, that's it. She can't come back. So my mom, blames this on me, but we moved to Connecticut at age because 14. She says it's because of that. I don't fucking believe it. I think she's just blaming me, whatever, it's fine. Now, moving to Connecticut was again, you know, I was feeling so, like, happy. I was feeling so confident and, like, really, like, feeling myself, like, as this 13-year-old in New York with all my friends, like, finally, like, not feeling, like, weird, awkward puberty phase, like, titties were looking good, and I was, like, just, I don't know, I just felt good, finally, mm -hmm. after, like, a couple years of awkwardness, like, I was, like, I feel pretty, I feel like I have my friends, you know, like, because it gets weird with the girls and everything, like, I had yeah. my group, and, like, we were going out till fucking 4 a.m., whatever, and then all of a sudden it's like, we're moving to Bumblefuck, Was Connecticut. Was it like deep Connecticut? Yeah. Because there yeah. are parts of Connecticut that are rough. Well, this wasn't rough. It was this more was like, like nice it was, suburban. It was pretty nice, but like not, it wasn't like Greenwich nice, but it, and it's not like, you know, a shithole. But like, right. it was. It was like it was, suburbia. But it was, yeah. You lived in a was, house. Yeah. You're coming from 24th and 8th. Exactly. Like, going to like it sneaking was, into the limelight. It was, a, exactly. It was a, such a culture shock for me. And no one prepared me. No one cared. Like my parents, I was like, I'm depressed. This sucks. They're like, yeah, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Like no one, like, forget it. Like they didn't give a shit. Did you have a good relationship with your mom and dad? Not really. Like they were, and now I do, but in hindsight, like they were just so busy. Like, they were so busy with us, three of us. You know, there's three of us. My mom worked full time. Um, my dad worked full time. It was just like, you know, like, we just didn't have that. You guys never sat down for dinner at night? We did, but I think, like. You never, like, you, you guys would sit around the table? Not every night. No, no, no. A lot of times I never, only... I can't remember one time, straight up. Well, I'm, I'm honestly, I can't really remember that many, but I don't want to say that because my mom's going to kill me, but she's not going to ever hear this, so it doesn't matter. But, like, I actually really don't. Like, it was, like, either my mom or my dad was there, yeah, mm -hmm. but not both of them at the same time. And, like, my dad, me and him, he just wasn't open. Like, now he is. He's great, and, like, we're so close. But it just wasn't like that. It wasn't like that with me and my daughter, what we have. Like, it's not... Like, I talk... She can talk to me about anything and everything. I talked to her about anything and everything. My parents didn't talk to me about sex. They didn't talk to me about getting my period. They didn't talk to me about drugs or alcohol. They didn't talk to me about any of that. None. Hmm. And they weren't like, Leah, addictions in the family. Like, like I tell my daughter that. Like, oh, you want to have a drink? Well, just know that you might end up becoming a blackout drunk. Ditch. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, moving to Connecticut was very difficult. I totally just ended up, you know, 
in a lot of trouble. But fast forward, you know, my parents threw me out of the house at age 17. And like so I know you were just getting into trouble. I was just hanging out with totally, the wrong people. Yeah, it was bad. It was like I can't even like not even gonna get into it. But it was like really like the opposite of like what you want your kids to do and like how mm. what you want their like adolescence to be like. That was mine. It's like the opposite. <laughs> um, not even no. My do parents. Do you think? Do you think? Do you so that? So were you like? Were you? Was there any moment throughout that time from like? Like, were you ever thinking about, like, hustle and, like, trying to come up and doing, you, like, things like that at that age? I think that I always was, like, I'm meant to do something really good. I'm going to be happy one day, and I'm going to, like, make a life for myself. It's going to be great. I don't know what it's going to be, but fast forward to being, like, 17 or, like, sorry, like, 18 and back in the city, I had asked a friend. I actually I got a credit card somehow, and I bought two things with it. A J'adore Dior <laughs> shirt, which was like the poppin', most poppin' shit you could have bought back then, and classes at FIT, like a non matriculated classes. Hey. So. That's cool. Right. Except I only went to FIT for like a month, and I was like, this is so boring. I don't want these people telling me what to take photos of and what to like. If I'm gonna do photography, I wanna take my own pictures. So I asked a friend, can I intern for your magazine? He owned Mass Appeal. I was like, I want to intern with the fashion director. So that's how I started like doing styling work. And then from her, I went to another, I started working with stylists. And then I realized that being a stylist is like the most like, demoralizing job ever. Because you have to be like, to be, the, to be an assistant stylist is like the worst thing. I was like, I can't be like, someone's like servant like this is not for me like I want servants not the other way around you know I was like this is crazy and the stylists were just fucking nuts so I was like there's no way I want to do this <laughs> <laughs> and you and but how long did you did you did you give it a go with this assistant styling thing? like with also little like retail jobs I was uh -huh. doing too you know I think I was working at the guest store for a while. I was working at the guest store for a while. I worked at DDC Lab, like, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like a few years, like four years or something. I don't know. Because I started the brand when I was 22. So crazy. That's actually really young. That is that is crazy. That's super young. Yeah, I was young. 22. Right, that makes sense because now I'm 37. Yep. Yeah, that's I impressive. I was 22. So, I, I mean, it was actually so how did you? So tell years. me how you got to the brand. Like, what was the... I, I mean, I also think Married to the Mob is fucking hilarious. And I, I remember when you came out with that, and I was just like, this chick is nuts. <laughs> I was like, she's totally. nuts. But, and, then, and then, like, all of a sudden, it was just like, I was like, whoa, Leah's it, out like, there getting it. It, like, blew the fuck it. up. It yeah. really did. I, I, got, I really feel like I put so much work in, but I also got lucky because that's, like, kind of part of success it's not just all working hard because, but like, by the way i just want to stop hard. you like you were so ahead of the time and i don't think that you were even thinking like for women by women yeah. vibe maybe you right. were yeah i mean like i know it was like pre like i know feminism is like so trendy now like even though like i don't really relate to like the type of feminism that's like mainstream but i was always on some like like, I can do whatever the guys do. Like, I don't want to be held to, like, different, like, double standards. Like, I can do whatever the fuck, and I don't want to be judged, you know? Mm -hmm. But still pay for my meal and open the door. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you know, I was hanging out. First of all, I was, you know, with Kiki's dad, my daughter's father, Rob, who owned A Life, who owns A Life. And then we lived across the street from Russ, who owns Sir. We we're hanging out with Aaron, who owns the New York thing. So I was like, my friend group was just all these guys that had clothing brands. Right. And I was like, I'm wearing their shit, cutting it up, doing this and that. Really, the real motivator behind doing my brand was that I was watching all these guys get to travel for free. Mm hmm. And I was like, I want to travel so badly. I had gone to Europe once. I went to Paris. I went to Copenhagen. And I went to Lund, Sweden. And it was like such a fucking amazing experience. Pre-Married to the Mob. Pre-Married to the Mob. Can you tell mob. us about Married to the Mob? Can you just tell us what it is? Yeah, sure. It's a sh clothing line, whatever. It's streetwear, I guess. Whatever. That's what people call it. Um, it's a female streetwear brand. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, I mean, we've... I don't even... Like, how did you, what, like, the name, 
you know, what, like, like the whole thing. Where, like, where did it, where did it come? I mean, you're saying what was motivating you, so I'll let you. Okay, take let that. me finish. Yeah, because yeah. it does kind of get into. So, these, you know, all these guy friends of mine have their brands, and I was like, I want to do my own brand. And look, and I was definitely. It was coming from my Married to the Mob was going to be, I knew that it was going to obviously encapsulate my personality and my perspective on things. And my perspective on things was that I did feel like I was in a boy's world a lot of the time because downtown New York, which I loved and I loved the whole vibe and the community and the culture, but it was very like the boys ran it. It was like a very masculine kind of thing, which maybe is part of why I liked it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I was like, this is going to be my perspective on this community and culture. And my first four t-shirts were, boys ain't shit but hoes and tricks, <laughs> fresh out of rehab, <laughs> and supreme bitch. And then a Married to the Mob logo. But like, you know, when I decided to do the brand, it was like that. I was like, all right, I've got to do this. And I had a partner at the time. And we were like, what are we going to call it? And the reason why we called it Married to the Mob was because, well, there's a few reasons, but the one that I really, and this is like going back now a long time, but we would joke around and say we, we were like mob wives because like we didn't really work that much and we were just always hanging out and like drink day drinking and, you know, shopping. <laughs> honestly. <laughs> the good life, y'all. It was a really good life. Yeah. Honestly, the, two th like the early 2000s, when I think back to the early mob years, it was like so much fun. I mean, mm -hmm. it was so much fun. I had no responsibilities, like none. I mean, my biggest responsibility was like to wake up and like check my mob email, which would, which is always just positive things. Like, we want to sell your stuff. Can we write about you in this magazine? I mean, I really felt like I fucking hit the jackpot, you know, which mm -hmm. I did in a way. People just were automatically intrigued. They were so intrigued, you know, streetwear wasn't mainstream yet. It wasn't, but it was so underground and so cool. And like, it was only like these like little pockets of people around the whole world though, mm -hmm. you know, everywhere that knew about this bubbling scene in New York City. Right, I and honestly think straight up, I honestly think that Rob literally pioneered that whole, like Supreme was before A-Life. Yeah. But Supreme is not Supreme without a life. <clears throat> I believe that. Rob's going to love that. But it's true. I believe that. Absolutely. And also, think about it. a life came, came up with a life Rivington Club before any of those other sneaker stores. And Nike was sending their people in to go see what the fuck was going I on. I remember. So there would be no tier one, tier two. You know, Nike has these tiers of where they sell their different kinds of sneakers to. Mm -hmm. And... A-Life started that whole sneaker craze. Like Let's unpack that for a minute. So yeah. A-Life, so A-Life was a, a, like one of the first real sort of like cool kid downtown New York City streetwear brands, if yeah. not the first outside of <coughs> Supreme. But, but Supreme the truth was is, so skate, it was a skateboard skate, company. Skateboard, right. It was a skateboard company, and there was a couple of people in the Supreme world that we're all friends with, some of them not here anymore, mm. that really made, they were crazy dudes yeah. in New York oh my City. God. Right? Yeah. And that's what made the brand the brand. That's the truth. Remember Max Fish? <laughs> I mean, do I? I mean, that was crazy. <laughs> do I remember? I mean, I'll, actually, I don't. That was crazy. I systematically was 86 from every single bar south of Houston, <laughs> north of Delancey, <laughs> east of Allen, and west of Essex. Honestly, there was a block. There was a block of, of there was a four block, city block, no joke, not this guy today, but was this guy. From East, I mean, I, and I remember it started with Max Fish, and I got 86 from Max Fish. It's really hard. I've been, I was 86 like three or four times, Same. and then I was like, Shane, bro, I know. you gotta let me. And then finally he was like, dude, I'm sorry. And then I remember that was at the end of my, my years out there, but I remember saying to myself, all right, well, I'm gonna make a stink in every bar in this whole neighborhood. And that's how crazy I was at that mm. time. And I literally got 86 from every single bar systematically walking down the street. And I was like, fuck it, I'm doing this. Anyway. Thank God you turned that ship around. Nobody thought right? I would. But there was like that crew literally made that brand, right? 
Yeah. However, A Life was a different thing. A Life was actually like. It was more sophisticated. It was more art driven. It was different. It was much different. It had, you know, the owners behind it were the ones who were the creatives. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's you know, a little it was different. also like when it was also like when hip hop was different though in New York, oh, right? Yeah. Like when hip hop in New York in the nineties, <laughs> like ninety three, ninety four, ninety five, ninety six, like you wouldn't it wouldn't be surprised you wouldn't be surprised to see Nas or Biggie Smalls in New York. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it was a little bit it was different. And so I think like that culture the, the, it wasn't very exclusive. Right. And A Life said, you know what? This is yeah. a thing we're going to make exclusive. They made it very exclusive. They made it very exclusive. And, and, um, and that spot on Rivington mm -hmm. was like, you know. First it, of all, you had to buzz to get in. Once you got in, the employees were going to treat you like shit. Um, and was, really, all you wanted to do was get into the backyard. Right, right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> like, once you got in there, yeah. what, you weren't, like, in. You didn't want to, like, buy a pair of sneakers. You wanted to go hang out and, like, smoke a blunt, exactly. Um, yeah. It was just fun. It was just a really good time. It was a good time. time. It was. Really it, good was. Time. it was. I mean, it was. There was so many things that I just don't remember, but it was, <laughs> it was. A good, I literally don't remember a lot of those, a lot of those days. And I think, what you know. What year did you, like, Stop, stop remembering? What year did you start remembering? Like 23, what, I was 23. No, but what, like what year was like? 2000, 2004. Okay, great, that's when I started Mob. Yeah, 2004 is when I like, it was over. You got your shit together though, uh, yeah. right? Oh yeah, 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 2004. Yeah. 2004 was like the year for me where it was just, you know, like everything came to a head. Mm. I died, came back to life, you know? Totally. Straight, actually. Like literally. Straight up. <laughs> Like, I, like I was about to be yourself. a stat, you know? Yeah. And so I think, but so many, you know, I, I, and, I, and, and by the way, also, like, I feel blessed. I feel blessed that I got it out of my system. I also feel blessed that, like, I stopped, you know, I, there were kids that died, you know, in the years that I was an, a city kid. Mm -hmm. But more kids died after I got sober. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, more kids died a lot more kids, a lot more friends of mine I lost from those days in the last 10, 12 years than before that because we were all young, I guess. But the drug, the drug thing in New York um, like is, 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 is kind of crazy, you know? And it went from like partying hard to like heroin. Totally. You know? And then that's, that's it. And that's and, and a lot of our for there's old, nowhere like, you go from there except you need to totally clean up or you're ODing and you're dying. That's it. Yeah, and I can't I can't I can't. I mean, at this point, it's sad to be able to count the amount of people that I know that have um, that have done that. But anyway, so you're at so so you're so you're like you're literally checking your email. Checking my email, whatever. But it, you know, it just got very real. You know, like it turned. I was like, I don't know how I, I did instinctively know how to, okay, like this amount of shirts were ordered. I'm going to make this amount plus a little extra. I'm going to sell it. It's going to make me like, I'm, you know, doubling my money and then I'm going to put this amount of money into this. I did know how to do that. I don't know how, but You I just did. figured it out. I figured it out. Um, I knew a lot of people. I knew people that owned stores. I used my relationships to get into those stores. I knew once I was at U in Union, then like all the other stores around the world that are looking at Union as the trend-setting boutique are gonna want my stuff, right? And it just built, like it just grew. I mean, there's, I mean, it's, I've had so many ups and downs with the brand, obviously. I had investors, I didn't have investors. I almost went bankrupt. That ended up not going bankrupt. I had to let everybody go one year before Christmas. It was hell. I've had so many highs and lows, like, you know, the window of Colette, like collaborations with Nike, MCM, Barbie, all that. Um, it's been really, I mean, if I didn't have it, I don't, like, I really like it. It's been my education, my, like, life raft in so many ways. It's kept me focused, and I've, like, grown up with Mob, 
if that makes sense. What do you think, like, if you had to point to one thing, I know it's probably a tough question, but if you had to point to one thing, what do you think the glue has been for you? Not for the business, but like, what do you think the glue has been for you? My daughter, what? of course. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. If it wasn't for her, I would have been like, I'm moving to Bali, bye. I'm done with this shit. Cause it's just like, there's been so many, I've been so stressed out at times with the brand. And I'm like, nope, gotta keep going. Got Kiki. That's cool. Yeah. 15 years, I mean, that's a long, that's it a run. A that's a run. <clears throat> it's that's a, really. That's a long run for it's, anything it's in crazy. life. I know. You know? But 15 years with a business in like a hyper competitive market. Yeah. Like New York and in an insanely well, difficult space to be in. Right. I mean, just the fact that we survived like 2009, 2008, 2009, 2010 was like crazy because literally most of my stores shut down. And right. I had to keep changing the way I ran the business. Like I had to just keep changing it. Were you watching your friends just go out of business left and right? Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, completely. Mm -hmm. I mean, plus I was friends with the people that own these stores, you know? So I was watching the store sh get shut down and or they stopped selling women's stuff because like there wasn't as many women. That's the other thing is like, you know, women's streetwear, it's like not a huge market, like men's streetwear. Like my male counterparts have made so much more fucking money than me. Like, no, I'm not salty about it. Like I'm the one that decide, wants, I keep doing this, you right. know? So it's not really ever been about the money for me. Like, but people kind of really, like it was extra hard as a female streetwear brand owner to get through the harder times. times. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, like where do you see the brand? Like what, what, how is the brand doing now? And then where do you see it going? I've, it's, so the last couple of years I totally changed the structure of the business. Um, one of the years I was like, I'm not making I guess I made some clothes, but it wasn't like, like there was a point where I was making, sh like there was new stuff coming out every single month, you know. I had like a whole office full of employees. But now it's kind of crazy because like I'm, I've changed it where it's like I have freelance, I don't have an office. I have freelancers, an assistant, um, and I drop ship everything. So I have so much less overhead and like, you know. You're actually able to make money now. I can actually make money, even though sales, even though like I maybe like last year, the sales weren't as high as a few years before that, but it doesn't even matter because there's still so much more money left over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cool. Amen. Yeah, no, I mean, you I know, was it's... so obsessed with like how everything looked <clears throat> to everybody before, and now I really just care about like how much fucking money I make. <laughs> So like, and what's the best for me? What am I happiest doing? I'm actually happiest with having free time to myself. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not happy managing people. I'm not happy dealing with the whole fucking, a whole bunch of employees. I actually hate it. I'm not good at it. I shouldn't be doing it. But that's amazing to know. Yeah. Right. And the fact that you've been able to structure your business to sort of fit that. It's amazing. It it's took me great. 15 years to like be able to do it, but like I feel like I put in those 15 years of work to be able to live the way I live now with it. And honestly, whatever happens to Mob tomorrow next year, like I don't. It's all good. I have no idea. You're living your best life. I don't even, exactly. You're straight living your best life right now. <laughs> straight up. <laughs> <laughs> That's really so am. good. That's so good. Um, all right. So you are now. Um, what are you doing? Like, what is your day-to-day? -day? What are you, what does it look like? You just... Well, I was filming yeah. for four months, so that was, like, I had no life. Mm -hmm. um, so is that, like, we don't, is, is that, like, cameras on you all day, every day, nonstop? Is there, like, a line drawn? It's more like, um, yeah, it was kind of, like, five days a week. Not all day, but, like, okay, a few hours a day. Sometimes, like, two different times a day. Sometimes mm -hmm. just once that day. Like, but then it's, like, it just ends up taking... It's hard. I found... I struggled with, like, being able to do anything else. What, how do you like TV? What do you mean? Do you, do you, is it fun? Do you enjoy it? <laughs> There's so much truck on my gun. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was fun. You know what? 
I can't do anything if I'm not having fun. If I'm not having fun, I don't want to fucking do it. Not that I was having fun doing mob every By single day. By the way, day. I'm just going to, because that's going to be the clip of this episode. If I'm not having fun, I'm not fucking doing it. Because that's, that is yeah. my philosophy. Exactly. I'll work my ass off. And you said a number of things in, in, in that monologue that you gave that, like, the truth is, is that I don't do the shit for the money. Right. That's actually real. You know, it sucks if you don't make money. Right. It's awesome if you do make money. Yeah. But if you're doing the shit that you're doing for the money, the only world, the only then business. Then I'd be in finance. Your, that's it. I'd be doing that's something it. else. That, I'd be I was just about on to say the Street. only the only thing in the world for you is finance. Right. If you if you are if you are living for the green, and I'm not talking about that green. Right. I'm talking about that green. I like that green. <laughs> You live for that green. <laughs> I don't live for it, but I like it. Um, but you know, like, there's a, there, there's a there's a whole world for that. Totally, where I, you're gonna make money, no doubt. Yeah. Well, if you're good at it. Right. But you know, I think that like everything else, small business is so hard. It's so hard. It is so hard. I don't so know. Hard. I enjoy the. I think I. You know what? Part of me enjoyed that. Like I. You know what? There were like days where I was like, Oh my god, how am I gonna buy a sandwich and a seltzer today? Like, literally. Like, I just don't even, like, no. I didn't care. Like, there were times, like, there was a point where, like, I was making so much money when I had, like, funding and everything was all set up. And then, like, I lost the funding and I went to, like, having this huge, amazing office and, like, huge salary to, like, not having anything. Like, my, I had an office that was, like, the size of a closet. I had no money. And I was still, like, I'm happy. I'm all good. That's great. And what do you think you can like draw a direct line to for that being the case? Freedom. Just like freedom. You felt like you were under the thumb with the big office and the exactly. big salaries and the and, and you're partners. a wild child. You need to be free. I need to be able to spread my wings and fly. So there were some, listen, it was a great experience having those invest, having those partners mm -hmm. and like having that experience and um, and it and I learned so much from it. But I was also like, oh, like, okay, this isn't that bad, actually. Like, now, like, not even, I don't even give a shit that I can't, like, go into Chanel and, like, buy a pair of shoes right now. Like, I'll be fine. I'll be able to do that again. Mm -hmm. But, like, I'm cool with, like, just not being able to do See, that. See, that's right the now. other thing that I think is so, like, money is, if you want money, you can get money. Totally. You know, like, that's, that, I think people, you know, the question that I always get is, whether it's like fitness or eating right or business or dad life or, mm -hmm. you know, the question that I get asked a lot on social media, mm -hmm. like often, more than anything else, number of times a day, how do you do that? And my answer is I'm not, I don't believe I'm special. I don't believe I'm unique. For the premise of this show, I do believe I was born with an ability to just get after shit, mm. whether it's good shit or bad shit. Right. I'm an extreme dude. Like, I, I, I don't know where that came from. I don't believe that that was taught to me over time. I believe that I actually was born. I think it's nature and nurture. I think it's a right? combo. I think that, 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 that you certainly hone your craft, but there are, certain, there are definitely people that would much rather work for someone else. Then oh, yeah. work for themselves. I've had plenty of employees who are t have told me, like, I would never want to do what you do. I'm happy working for you. Right, and that's where and I, I like, that's where crazy. I that's the that's where that is where I believe that there is a big difference between the borns and the mates. And I believe that I think that you're living your best life. You own your own business. You figured out a way to get on fucking primetime television. You you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like. Know. Yeah. But I'm just saying yeah. that, like that right there, you're, you, there, there's something different about you, and it's not like you know. Who knows? Maybe it is a genetic thing. I don't know. I, I can't point to it. My father was an entrepreneur, a very unsuccessful entrepreneur. Mm. My grandfather was a military guy, but was a very successful entrepreneur. Um, it like, and I don't, and like my father didn't influence me in any way outside of like. Not good, <laughs> um, you well. know, and so and and so like I think, you know, I I do believe that I was born with something, and um, and so, you know, and I and 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 I think that you probably were too. 
right? Because like, there's a hustle. There's a hustle. There's a hustle that people have. Um, I, I do believe it is personality, like innate personalities that we're born with, because we are. We right. absolutely are. And then it also has to do with things that have happened to us in our life that shape us. And if you have this whatever innate personality combined with these things that happen, it can be great or it can be terrible. I believe IQ today is pointless. Is useless. I think so too. I don't think it's useless. I think it's really great to be able to learn from somebody who's very smart, right? Like I actually appreciate that. Like somebody that you can hire to sit and like crush your numbers and right. like I, I am so grateful for those people. <laughs> However, I think EQ, the ability mm. to walk into a room with tattoos on your hand and a bunch of billionaires and be able to raise money. Raise money and like have them love you. Yeah. By the time you walk out that room is a special talent. And I, 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 sort of, I sort of compare it to the fine artist that is able to like pick up a fucking paintbrush and just paint some beautiful shit. The singer who's like just good. Yeah. No, the athlete. Really. You're right. That like just runs fucking faster. I know. I was at dinner the other night and this woman was like talking about her daughter who's... 14 and in 10th grade and she was like my daughter's skipped a class and is young for her grade and is 14 and I was thinking like that's great get it your daughter is like highly intelligent Einstein right doesn't mean she's going to be a successful person no. or have a or be happy or be able to it, it's just yeah she's going to be able to do really well on her SATs right. she's going to get into a really good college most likely right and be in debt Unless you're rich. What else? Like, I don't know what else that, I don't know what that means. Like, I don't. I'm with you. I think, I, I also think that given, like, <clears throat> the current climate in what we consider success, like, what is success? What is success? Right. Yeah. I don't For know me, exactly, but I, I think I know. What? It has nothing to do with cash. It has to do with, like, are you happy? Yeah. Internally. Like, do you, do you actually enjoy yourself? I think it has some, somewhat to do with cash. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I, I think... For I th me, it, it does. Like, for me, it does... For me, financial, like, success does include financial stability. And, mm -hmm. and be, only because financial stability... And I'm and maybe prop, most likely I'm not just offers not just security. Stability, it offers, offers security. It offers security and freedom. It mm -hmm. really does, you know. Um, only because I've felt both of those. Mm -hmm. I felt like I don't have financial stability, and I do. And so I do feel better when I have it. But even I'm though I'm still able to be like... happy when I don't too, you know. But also it's like relative, relatively speaking, is we live in the fucking most expensive city in the world, or mm -hmm. one of them. You know what I mean? So. It's hard to feel I you know it's sometimes. it's weird like I I've I've been on both sides of the spectrum as well um, you know knock on wood like financial security has been a part of my life for some time now uh, and but it's still like there's still there you know well, of it's, course, you can still have it and be unhappy and not feel successful. I don't think uh, no I don't think I don't I'm not talking about the the that that sort of correlation to happiness necessarily for me. I'm talking about like, if I close my eyes and I think about like, you know, I would say that there were moments in my life when I was like 26 where I was bartending, um, had like, I don't know, five grand to my name, maybe, mm. maybe. Right. Like in, you know, under my mattress. Right. And... Um, I thought you were gonna say five girlfriends. <laughs> I was married. And that too. Oh no, you, you were married at twenty six. Got married at twenty six. Wow. Five girlfriends when I was like twenty two. Right. Um, but like I, I I I remember there were times there were like my life was like I woke up in the morning, I went for like a run, 
I like leisurely had breakfast. I walked my dog. Mm. I like had lunch. You know, I went to the gym. I came back, like took a nap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like got Chilling. to work at five o'clock. Chilling. Chilled from five o'clock. You yeah. know, bar managing or bartending, and like hung out with people. Made like five hundred bucks four nights a week, and the other days I was off. And so I was making like two grand a week in cash. Were you happy? I was, absolutely. Yeah. I was fucking happy. I was like, I was, I was like, I was happy. Two and grand a week in cash isn't bad. No. Not, not terrible not, at all. No, no, it's not. I mean, in New York, it's like, you're not, you're not like, no, you know, yes. you're not like Lamboing, but no. like you're, 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 you're okay. You're, you're all right, two grand a week cash. Um, but, like, I just remember there were more, like, I can go back to that and be like, man, like, I actually was, like, the amount of stress that being a business owner um, of, like, forget if your business is successful or unsuccessful, yeah. right? Like, just being a business owner right. offers a whole new slew of responsibilities mm -hmm. that make it very difficult for me. And I could be, you know... And I say, like, I genuinely am. I could be one of the happiest guys you know. Like, I believe that, you know. I, I, there's, like, yeah, I wake up in the shit some days. There's no doubt. You know, I, I'd say out of 300 days a year, I'm probably pissed off 60 of them, mm. you know. But so one day a week, you know, the, the, yeah, like a full. That sounds like about right for me, too, actually. I yeah, think. like a full day where I'll just be like, fuck, you know. But it's all good, and I'm cool with it. And then the next day it's. Gone, good, so. it's good. It's yeah. not like I'm digging myself deeper, right. in, you know. Um, but I will say that, like, you know, that the, the level of stress that comes with business ownership is real. Yeah. It's just real. There's never a day where it's just like, oh, I'm going to go get a cup of coffee. Yeah, you don't have to think about it, right? <laughs> you know what I'm it's saying? like 24-7. 24-7. And, and it's a blessing and it's a curse, right? Like, it's beautiful and it's, and, it's and it's super challenging and difficult. And it's not for everybody. It's not. It's not. So, I mean, Married to the Mob now is going in a great direction, and you're happy with it? Totally. Absolutely. So, do you, like, have you made any drastic changes over the years? Like, in terms of, like, the, the vision, the, the... I think just the, like, getting, kind of streamlining everything and doing drop shipping and getting rid of my office and that kind of thing, which that also was, like, so amazing because for the first time in my daughter's life, like, I got rid of her nanny <laughs> and was like I'm home wow like now I can I mean I don't really cook but like I can order dinner for us you know um I'm around and you I mean I, I you know we don't get to hang out much but I, I follow you on social and it just looks like you have such a good relationship with your daughter I really do I mean She's it's such best. it's like you guys are like besties we are <laughs> like straight She's up She's amazing I can't even tell you like the other day she called me when she got out of school, and she's like, I'm hanging out with my friends, cancel my tutor. And I was like, what? I was like, you're bugging. Like, I'm not canceling your tutor. You can go play, do whatever, and then come home, and you have your tutor in an hour. She calls me. She's being relentless. I cancel my tutor. Annoying. She's annoying the shit out of me. She won't stop. And I was like, I had one of those days where I woke up in the shit, you know? And I was mm -hmm. like, stressed out. I was not happy. Me and my mom were fighting. She was like, making me so angry. And I said, look, here, I'm going to keep it 100 with you right now. I'm so angry with grandma that I'm shaking. I'm PMSing. I'm having a bad fucking day, and you're making it worse. And she's like, okay, I'm coming home right now. And I was like, all right. And, like, you know, 10 minutes later, she opens the door, and she just throws her arms around me. Oh, my God. It's, like, making me emotional. I, that's not why I told her. Like, I wasn't expecting that. I just wanted her to shut up. You know what I mean? She, I wanted her to, she loves you. I she wanted cares her to come like home crazy. in an hour and do her tutoring. But she knew that I was stressed out and I was in distress. And she freaking left her friends to come home and hug me. She's amazing. That's so good. She's the best. So you guys have like a really special relationship. I tell I, I'm honest. I'm just honest with her. I can't hide who I am. I was very scared when I had a kid, even when she was like when I was getting sober and you know, when she was younger, I was like how am I going to, because I'm a little edgy or whatever, like I have a podcast where I talk about sex and I, all these things that like 
you are raised to be like, well, moms don't do that. Moms are perfect. Moms are like this, and moms are like that. And then you become a mom, and you're like, I'm still me. Great. <laughs> what do I do now? Oh, shit. Like, I'm still the same fucking person. She's found my vibrators. She found joints. You know, I had to explain masturbation to her. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had to, like, do all, like, I am who I am. Right. Like, and I, I was so terrified that if my daughter figured out who I was. You that were she, terrified? Yes, I was terrified. That if I, if she found out who I was, then she's not going to love me and accept me. And my, my daughter totally knows who I am. <laughs> so you walked around with that shit for a minute. Oh, definitely. Yeah, mm. I felt a lot of pressure to be like the hide aspects of myself. Of course, I, yeah, you do, you know, as age appropriate, she's found things out about me or whatever. Like, right, I've right, been right, honest right, with her right, about yeah, things, yeah. certain things. But um, even our humor, I mean, we both have dark senses of humor, and I can just make really, I mean, they're, it's like borderline, like a little like, whoa. But she's so fucking funny. Oh my God. Like, we she just, looks funny. She's hilarious. She, she, she. She's just, she's smart. And the thing she says sometimes, I'm just like, oh my god, this kid's like really like. You know, it's 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 funny when you when you when you were talking about like you know you. I've got two little boys, <clears throat> and I've been married a long time. You know what I mean? I, I we I, like I feel like. Like the truth, is I don't ever feel, like an adult. Yeah. I just totally. I just. <laughs> don't <laughs> like I feel I've got two mortgages I got businesses I got like married I got kids and, and like, like an I'll adult. crawl up next to my son. last night I crawled up next to my son and I was he was like he's he's in our room every night now. is this the older son or the older younger son, son? Okay. it's a wrap he's been in our room for so he's got a bed on the floor we do not let him in the bed <clears throat> but like I love like creeping up next to him and like mm. i Last night, I like got on the floor, I lied down next to him, and he was sleeping, snoring like an animal. <laughs> and I'm like, this is my son. This is some, like, am I supposed to feel a certain, like literally these were the thoughts that were going through my mind. This is my son, this is real. I made him, he is mine, I love him, but am I supposed to feel a certain thing? Because I still feel just like me. Mm. Like, yep. you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, you know, he pulls my finger, I fart. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just, <laughs> like, that's real. Like, and, and that's, like, how they grew up, you know? And, like, I don't know if, uh, if that's normal or not. But, like, my Sounds kids, great. you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, like, I, I really, I do not feel, and I feel, and I also feel like that's also awesome, you know? Because, like, I don't push anything on them yeah. at all. I'm interested in a whole bunch of shit, but I don't. Like, I, I don't think that there is, like, I love that you're just like, yo, I'm me. I'm honest with my daughter. It's just easier. It's just the easier. I took a risk, and I was like, I'm just going to be me. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just going to be me, and that's it. And, like, let's hope that she's, like, into it. You know what I mean? And she's into it. She just knows me. She knows me. See, I also feel like I hope, you know, because if, if my sons are anything like me, I'm in big ass trouble. Yeah, but no, they're not going, this is the thing. I've been honest with Kier, and because of that, I think that she's just so much more well-equipped and educated in terms of like, look, of course she needs to make her own mistakes, and she's going to, and she's gonna learn from them, but I have been honest about my mistakes that I've made, you mm -hmm. know? And I really do think she's learning. Like, I do believe that she has learned from my mistakes. I mean, time will tell, but. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I look, I feel, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. I feel like I'm lucky in so many ways because. Um, and you know what? If your kids do end up even like 50% like you were when you were young, <laughs> let's hope they don't, but <laughs> I'm kidding. But you'll like know how to in intuitively deal with that. Yeah, I hope so. You know, I, I guess the hard part for me is that there is real addiction in my story. Right, like a genetic kind like, of well, predisposition to, like, For right? me it was. It's not like running in my family, actually. Mm, interesting. It's not. Um, however, there is diabetes in my family, and some people say that the gene is kind of the same. It's like a sugar deficiency. I don't know. I mean, that that's weird. I mean, that, that would make sense, of course. Yeah. And so uh, there is diabetes mm. in the family, but... 
you know, I think there is this like, I'm, I, I, I am grateful that I don't, I, I won't drink in front of my kids. You know what I'm right. saying? Like I don't, my wife straight up has never seen me have a drink. Yeah. No one in right. my life that I've met in the last 15 years has. And I think for my kids, like, I, you know, I, I'm not like super program guy, but you know, I've, I've, I, there are people that I love that I've seen in, you know, in the addiction clause. And there's, and, it, and sometimes I get scared because like there's no talking somebody out of that. You know what I'm saying? No, like there isn't. One of my best friends, best friend, he's my best friend. Um, who I've, you know, we've been friends for 30, for whatever, 25 years. He's, in, he's struggling. And he looked me dead in the eye. I'm like, I promise you, this is it. I swear to God. I right. swear to God. Yeah. Right. God, God, God. And he's, he had been lying to me for a year. And he, and he went out and got high that night. And here's his best friend. And I know the game. You can't. Yeah shake somebody sober or, or no. you, you can't, t even if you, if you change somebody to a radiator, it doesn't matter. Like if they don't want to, they can change, you chain them to a radiator for a year, six when years, they, when you, 10 like, yeah, years, when the you minute you unlock, unlock it, it like it's a wrap. Choo, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Totally. And so like, that's the only thing that scares me about the city, growing up in the city with the kids. Like I'm not leaving the city. I have zero interest in leaving the no, city. No, but there's like, Bad shit everywhere. I know. Look at the I opioid know. shit. That's like in the suburbs and stuff. I so know, I know. it's everywhere. Yeah. Nothing to do with the city, I don't think. Um, this was so much fun. That was great. That I was... knew this was going to be therapeutic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I think these conversations, I think this is the stuff that I, I got into podcasting because I like to hear stories. You know, I think humans, I think human beings like the story stuff. Connection is important. Very important. Especially it's the EQ. right now. Yeah. And I got to say, like, I'm sure, and I'm sure you know it, but, like, I'm sure you've been an inspiration to so many young women um, with your brand and, like, the fact that you're just out there and you're relentless and you're getting after it. And you haven't, you, you've had a business for 15 years that is focused on the ladies of the world and in a space where the ladies don't get a lot of love. True. And so you've sort of just been like this, like, you know, Check this. It's like I'm, 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 I'm coming for you. Thank you, Mike. No, that means a lot to me, honestly. Thank you. I well, appreciate I, that. I mean, you, it's, you've, you know, you've inspired me uh, a lot because I'd be like, damn, she's, there she is again, <laughs> straight up. And um, I think it's special, and I'm so happy that you came on. Thank it's you. fun. It's fun Thanks to, it's fun me. to reminisce too. I know it is. You know, I, know, I don't really reminisce. Well, also, like we like saw each other pre. Entrepreneurship. Yeah. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like we've things could have been much different no for one both of us. Like if, if, if there was a, if there was a snapshot of us then, um, nobody oh would have put this on us. God. <laughs> Waking up um, at that share. pool. <laughs> Waking up at that pool. One story. We'll I'm give you one like, story. No, I really don't even remember this, but I do remember that there was, like, other people. <laughs> Who were they? We woke up. But there was, like, a nice couple. Do you remember these people? I, it, this is what I it remember. Was, like, a young chick. She was cool, but who was she? I have we no were idea. At, we were at, we woke up. I got into like, this fight at a nightclub. I know that part. You did? Oh, definitely. All I remember is waking up at a pool at some hotel or potentially just like a luxury high-rise building that we <laughs> snuck into and waking up on a lounge chair one side of my body completely burnt to a crisp a bottle of absolute vodka at my feet no and kids running around I don't even I only remember waking up I don't remember anything else I just remember like I don't remember much from that trip there you have it, ladies and, and gents. That's Leah, it. <laughs> Leah that's, McSweeney, that's, y'all. That's, that's it. Way to go, homegirl. You've come a long way. Oh my God. Yeah. So no thank more you. absolute. No more absolute. Absolute. <laughs> um, absolutely no more absolute. That was awesome. You fucking rock. Keep getting it. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Mike. And um, you can catch her on the Real Housewives of New York. And improper etiquette. Improper etiquette. Are you still ready for Penthouse? Um, I'm still totally involved. I haven't, like, I've been so busy filming, but I'm getting back into it. 
So we can edit I'll be that writing. Out. Whatever, no, like read Penthouse. My okay. articles are up there. Yeah. Dope. That's Leah McSweeney. She's the best. I've known her a really long time. I am. So, I just feel better now. You rock. That's a wrap. 